we have memes, and this is quite, I would say, controversial theme uh, because nobody knows if you can use the memes in the in the creatives because of the you know legal issues and all of the fun stuff. But the thing is, like, yeah, nobody cares that much. <laughs> Oh, well, it depends. If you work with a big company, then their legal team usually cares so much, but uh, not everybody, not anybody else. Anyway. Isn't, isn't it dependent on the... This is no bullshit gaming podcast, two and a half gamers. Sharing actionable insights, dropping knowledge from our day-to-day -day user acquisition, game design, and ad monetization jobs. We are definitely not discussing the latest industry news, but having so much fun. Let's not forget this is a 4 a.m. conference discussion vibe, so let's not take it too seriously. All right, <clears throat> so welcome everybody. This is session number 85. Uh, my name is Matija Lancharic. I'm Felix Broberg. And I'm Jakub Remiar. We are your hosts, and also we are happy free consultants. <laughs> 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 Doing uh, consultants in the UA ad monetization game design side, so you know, uh, that's how it is. So, how's your week? What's uh, what what happened on the Heat Conference or at the Heat Conference, which I missed, obviously. Uh, me, and, me and me uh, Romy, Romeo, uh, Jakub, <laughs> Romeo. Uh, we did a <laughs> acapella <laughs> two-person <laughs> rap battle, essentially talking uh, live podcast, and it went really well. It was really appreciated. We had a lot of good. Um, yeah, feedback saying it was the best talk of the conference, actually. Oh, there you go. Okay. Two people said that. Yeah, not exactly. the talk, it was a stand-up. <laughs> it was actually a yeah. stand-up. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I don't know. We, we just have to do these stand-ups and uh, yeah, connect it to, to knowledge sharing, I guess. It's always yeah, but it was, it was really interesting because I had like hybrid casual, then more hybrid casual, and then even more hybrid casual. And actually, on my panel, at least, there were people from actual... The, hybrid the casual. Other, yeah, from hybrid casual. Ooh. And they were talking the, the thing that we were talking here, pretty much the same. Nice. They're all switching. So, yeah, it's Man, quite interesting to hear from actual people making games. Oh, I had I mean, a panel, and we had a guy who was a, a partner at a law firm, like a big law firm, and he was specializing in GDPR. And Ooh. yeah, it was quite interesting, like his take point of view. And then like I had a, I like had a coffee with him afterwards where we're just standing at the table and he's just like, man, GDPR, GDPR has made me so much money. I'm like, man, GDPR yeah. has caused me so much fucking grief. I'm glad at least you're <laughs> earning money from it. <laughs> well, that's how it works. One, yeah. one person loses money. The other, other one kind of earns more. It's uh, yeah. easy. So what are we talking about today? It's not. It's not a game review. Woohoo! It's a bring Finally. your own shit, I guess. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's, uh, I see some some Black Friday bullshit on Admon site. You're quite in the um, the end of the the year, right? Uh, thriving. I'm I'm very disappointed, <laughs> obviously, on the UA side. <laughs> it's not it's not great. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to give you some tips. Uh, how to run UA and, and and different things, and then we have again soft launch sonar, right? Exactly after three months, exactly. You can say you can <laughs> say a lot of things. You can say a lot of things about Jakub, yeah. but one of the things is he's not like he's punctual. Well, that's for damn sure. He is. <laughs> So in that case, I would I was supposed to do a creative. No, I was counting actually for the creative trends, and uh, it's too early. Maybe no, I but the see. next creative trends you're combining with the Captain Hook Awards. That's the long no, way to no, Captain Hook. No, 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 no. It's yeah, I will do a cre creative uh, trend and then we will do a cre uh, the Captain Hook episode. It may be at the end of the year. We'll see. It's you know that's almost like a Christmas type of episode where we or the hundred, yeah, <laughs> or hundred, yeah, where we have a lot of fun. We'll see. We'll see about that. Right. Uh, so, so what's up with Black Friday and uh, the admin? Everybody's should I start? Earnings? Yeah, I should start. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, because yes, it's, uh, it's, it's essentially the joyous time of the year when we're only exactly. a couple of weeks away from the big <laughs> magical ad monetization day, oh which God. is Black Friday. <laughs> I think my Christmas so, ruined. No, 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 no. It's actually quite interesting because like financially, we're in like a very similar, similar like overall macroeconomic environment compared to last year. So we actually have to expect that this year consumer spending habits will be very similar to last year's. 
So what does that actually mean? Like traditionally? <laughs> that was like, what the fuck does that even mean? Wait, no, no. Yeah, exactly. What does that mean? So traditionally, before last year, ad monetization was very large, like saw very large increases for about 10 to 14 days in December to the run up of Christmas Eve. And that gave birth to this fucking bullshit term that I hated so much called Q5. Oh, man, 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 man. Q5 is a very well-known term for it. Yeah, years. but it's it's hearing it for the it's first sucked. time. <laughs> really? Who is, what? You? Are you it's living fun, under the really? rock? Or fat, like, You're not joking. Idiot? You're not joking. <laughs> no. I mean, I, I even mentioned it on, on like last year podcast. What the fuck? Maybe yeah. it was too long ago. <laughs> Jesus, guys. Q5 is just a... The, Ah, it's like He's playing the worst, yeah, the worst yeah. term ever. But yeah, well, yeah. Go. Anyway, bullshit term, and basically <laughs> you used it when you saw massive like bumps in ad revenue. So normally, what happened during these peak moments was that you have your normal baseline of gaming ads, and typically in mobile ad monetization, they take up about eighty or ninety percent of your fill in in-app advertising. That's the baseline, right? So during Christmas, uh, these impressions are also starting to look very appealing to branding and e-commerce. So this in turn, like, pushes you can up see the see demand. He's already yawning. He's bored. Yeah, I know. Because game designers don't care about, like, yeah, the monetizing of their games. Exactly. They don't want to do it. But me and Mate are in the trenches trying to make these games money. So, you know, exactly. pay attention. Pay attention so you don't ask, uh, like, oh, Q4, Q5, I just, yeah. yeah. Just Making time. money through IPs, man. What they're talking about. Yeah. yeah how anyway. many special offers have you uh, now prepared for this, like, Q4, Mr. Inup Revenue? Hundreds. We'll see. A hundred. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let's see, Mister Mister Hundred yeah. IIPs. So anyway, e-commerce branding comes in, and then basically that increases the demand for the slots, and basically the supply doesn't really change. That means the price goes up, which means that traditionally for the like the last two weeks of Christmas in December, uh, basically ECPMs went up fifty or seventy percent, which was great. So Ooh. with the downturn last year think look very different and there was no q5 <laughs> everyone was talking about it and it never happened Super so there was barely, yeah there was barely a 20 percent increase in ecpms during these traditional weeks but the big difference was difference was that black friday saw a massive boom and it was bigger than ever before so if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. So people, when like their wallets are a bit squeezed, like basically they do their holiday shopping earlier to get their cheaper prices. And Black Friday is like perfectly situated to do this. So this means that the new like low turn or like low economy slowdown admon holiday is no longer December, but is Black Friday. So that means that admon people now need to pay attention to Black Friday <laughs> instead of... <laughs> I mean, I'm most probably gonna zoom zoom in on <laughs> on Jakub's face. Is it's too bad? Care. Like the camera doesn't do it anymore. The camera. Yeah, like, exactly. Why is the camera not doing it? Anymore? I turned it off because he wanted to turn it off. Yeah, exactly. Why no? Now he's supposed to the sunglasses. Be amazing. It would be amazing. But anyway, okay. So last year I looked up the historic uh, averages. So last year on Black Friday, ECPMs went up between thirty to fifty percent, depending on the client accounts. So. Hmm. That means, given that we're in this new economic climate, that means that admon managers have to plan a bit differently. Since in the past, you basically had this long road up to Christmas. And right now, you actually have to deal with just a boom that's for a day or two, right? So that means you have to think about it very differently on how to maximize ad revenues. So what I'm telling my clients right now, since is one day, and only one day where you see your gains that used to be over three weeks, you have to start playing around with the supply. So I have been telling my clients that on Thursday evening, the day before Black Friday, you should decrease your cooldown timers on justicials or by like 30 or 40%. So you actually increase the amount of impressions you're getting for only one day, because essentially since it's a one day bump, you don't have to be as mindful with the retention as you usually have to be if it's over a three week process. So uh, what I'm going to do with all my clients is on Thursday evening before Black Friday, when everyone's decreasing their cooldown timers, I'm going to do gamma and admon refreshes on all ad units. 
AI. AI. And what I'm are. hoping to do is a well, Remo's going to like this because he's going to understand it a pincer movement, if you will, <laughs> on maximizing both demand and supply while ECPMs are already high. The fuck what is do you think about that, Remo? Remo, don't know will tell what's you. Pincer movement? No. When two armies pretty much are encircling the other army. Ah. Jeez. You know, I included the pincer part because I knew Remo would be drifting off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Essentially, like, what uh... I'm trying to say is like right now, since Black Friday is coming up uh, and it's only one day where you're going to probably see the highest CCPMs until next year's Black Friday. What I'm saying is do everything in your power to maximize impressions on that day and like decrease banner refresh rates as much as possible decrease cooldown timers, increase like how many impressions you're showing. And at the same time, do add mob and gam refreshes because it's probably the last time you can actually do it before it gets deprecated. So this is the Ooh, last Black Friday. Oh, last last Black Friday. Okay. Well, so, you, so, can, you can refresh these like gam and add mob of, uh, units like until the end of the year multiple oh, times. You can, yeah, you can probably do it for yeah. a bit longer, but like, yeah, this is the last Black Friday that's ever going to happen. Black but Friday. I'm just saying like, try to maximize it. And the big difference is, since it's only for one day that you're trying to maximize it, you can actually play around with impressions a bit as well to increase the amount of supply. Why so, you... yeah, okay. TLDR is like spam players with interstitials yeah. on Friday. No, Thursday, Thursday af uh, afternoon or evening. Thursday already. afternoon to Friday. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Or I, you know, you know, you know, just just do it the whole weekend until the Cyber Monday, and that's fine. <laughs> until the retention completely collapses. <laughs> I was like, no, one honestly, day, like one if, day. You, if, yeah, if you on one day, interstitials, like that can really kill things if you do it for too long. Yeah, but the thing is, like, it, even one day can piss off a lot of people, uh, uh, which are which could be well. Sensitive. Are you running any A B tests on these people? Oi, oi, oi. Most probably oh, for Black Friday, absolutely not. No, it's time to get the money. Okay, it's just saying permanent damage to retention. You heard it oh. from here. <laughs> no, no, we need to put it into well, not softly. This doesn't like count as soft launch sonar or uh, review ra radar, but we need to check these uh, statements and then like uh, do a, um, a post mortem if this, this worked and how it worked. Yeah, I guess it, it will work because it's just temporary for some Yeah, time. it's just one, one day. It's just 24 hours. Yeah. And yeah. like honestly, last year, like ECPMs were up 35 to 55%, right? So. Mm. Yeah, you can justify it yeah. quite a lot, especially that's like a good, yeah. good trick. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is that a compliment? Nice. It's, yeah, sound like that. Possibly, Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> but only because of the pincer movement. <laughs> I thought I'd win him over there. Yeah. Oh, At least yeah, you learned something, much as well, right? Yeah, See? yeah. Of like course. Q five. <laughs> so, uh, Maciej, should we, should we, uh, should we movements, uh, fucking Rima right now so we can talk about the UA portion of today? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not sure even like if I can even continue after this. Yeah, go, go, go. You need to go second, Maciej. <laughs> no, don't worry. Uh, it's going to be quite, uh, quite quick, I think, because we need like five hours for your uh, soft punch sonar. <laughs> Jakob's was, soliloquy. <laughs> and I was I was just hoping finally there's like no, there's not gonna be any video in the in in the podcast. So the post production is gonna be easy, but now I know it's not gonna be easy. I buy by time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You know how hard it is to do these things. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. Exact um, very similar to hard uh, as hard as I uh, I, I do it in post production. Anyway, so so five uh, five tips for killer UA. So I started doing this like um, uh, web, like blog series like a year and a half ago, I think. This was already like my fifth article, and I just kind of uh, pinpointed like few different articles and few different tips from different articles, so I can share it in here as well because the first one was really well received and then every other was also very well received so i think i i can i can speak about these tips in here as well but it's going to be five only usually it's like 11 so if you want to read those subscribe to the newsletter <laughs> look he looks yeah, okay. more excited for your thing than he did for mine a little bit yeah i know because he's, he's the second best UA manager on the podcast it's also <laughs> <laughs> that is also the, maybe that's also the the trick. First okay. of all, rude. Yeah, I know, but also true. <laughs> <laughs> true hurts. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's you know, it's it's very hard uh, to hear these things. Anyway, so okay, first tip: the hook. And um, 
And we already kind of teased this a little bit because we were like showing different hooks and different uh, gaming reviews. And uh, there are like few companies that are doing these um, hooks very well. So uh, we're going to kind of uh, have this award, which is going to call, which is going to be called Captain Hook of the Year 2023 because Felix already mentioned it in uh, like the previous podcast. So, so what is the hook all about? I know, you know, the producing the creative side, it's not easy, uh, but I think uh, we need to look into a hook, which is kind of like first one to four seconds of the, of the creatives. And it's always like the most important part because you're kind of trying to capture the, the player's attention and uh, with something like powerful attention grabbing hooks that draws them into, you know, keep, I, I keep watching the, the creative actually. So you should ensure that the hook is kind of related to the game, at least in some way, because obviously if you have a strategy game and then suddenly there is like, a, I don't know, uh, what's like Hero Wars kind of hook? There's the 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 main hero climbing the climbing up the lady I mean, exploding toilets <laughs> Expl- and exploding uh, toilets and all of these out yeah. of cleavage. <laughs> yes, exactly, <laughs> something like that. So uh, I would say um, century games uh, with whiteout survival and obviously this like uh, winter theme. They're using a lot of uh, real life hooks from with like snow and and freezing uh, um, nature and all of the like different things which is there's literally ice different. cream in the in the ads ice cream yeah why not uh, it's it's quite interesting and quite good and also like definitely get, grabbing the attention so i think uh, also when it's re- related to the game uh it's the hook kind of enters the, the smooth tradition from the initial hook to like, keep following the, the key message of the creative and uh, hooks makes really a difference uh, and as I said, I think the masters of the hooks are the century games. Uh, but, you know, like we have different games uh, and uh, gaming studios. So, and also different creatives. I will put these, all of these together and then we can actually vote. But uh, how can you, how can you think about the hook? So I, what I do usually is kind of like run static images in the creative testing and create, like take the winner of this, um, of this test and kind of use it in the video. Uh, which is usually connected to showing like very similar gameplay. Or what well, I'm doing like uh, century games type of things where I just took uh, interesting videos from YouTube using first three seconds of the video and bam, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you, have a, you have a hook, obviously. But I also um, used uh, Midjourney and AI to produce these um, static images for, for the creative testing and then translated that into the video. So you have three different uh, scenarios, how you can think about it. And again, uh, the Captain Hook of the Year 2023, uh, it's going to be uh, announced at the end of the year. Then we have memes. And this is quite, I would say, controversial theme uh, because nobody knows if you can use the memes in the in the creatives because of the you know, legal issues and all of the fun stuff. But the thing is, like, yeah, nobody cares that much. <laughs> oh, well, d- depends. If you work with a big company, then their legal team usually cares much, but uh, not everybody, not anybody else. Anyway, isn't isn't it dependent on the meme? Like, I mean, if it's like yes. a, a okay. famous actor's face or something, like, I yeah, guess you won't yeah. be using that. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. uh, most probably not. I I had this like one uh, scenario and one one meme when I used. There was this like guy playing on on. Uh, on a drum and there was a cat just going around him. So we used this in like uh, a cat kind of related apps. <laughs> and uh, this guy actually reached out to us like, hey guys, like what the fuck? <laughs> Why are you using my video? Like, look, uh, so we're using it. Uh, do you want some money? Yes. And that was it, basically. <laughs> How much do you have to pay him? 500 euros. It was quite cheap. How come, uh, but... how come, the, how come the cat bongo drummer costs the same as the porn star that you used in the video? <laughs> The thing is, because it was a long time ago and I used Johnny since it's not the same uh, these days on Cameo anymore because uh, I have the the license forever, basically for 500. Now it's it's limited for like a few months and it's way, way more expensive. <laughs> so, well, you know, uh, I got it very early. I was, uh, I was very, 
Yeah, very early, I guess. So you I can still use him? Yes. Yep. Okay. No, no, no. Like I can, I can fill. I can see the Vice article title: "How I Got the Rights to Using Yoni Sins for <laughs> yeah, Mobile yeah, for a Long Time for the Rest yeah, of My Life." <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, like, it's uh, it's connected to to one game and one game only. So, uh, I mean, which game are you allowed to say? No. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. That's the part of the anyway memes. So, uh, thinking about the creative ideas, uh, I would say I'm usually looking outside of gaming. Uh, and like memes usually come into my face when I just browse Facebook or Instagram or like random random pages. Like any any go to websites for memes, guys. Like where Reddit. Are you? Oh, Reddit, four chan nine gag, obviously. Like for me, the best memes or like let's say the most memes I learn always from some kind of like very specific gaming community where it's kind of used within the usual content that like is in the feed of the whatever yeah. discord reddit something so there's like stuff that everybody's like asking like faq or some kind of like yeah. really important stuff and then it's kind of stitched with fluff which is most of the time memes okay yeah, because you know like uh if you have you know great meme or video you can rec recreate that for for your game right so it doesn't need to be very much connected to the games but uh, Red Shadow I mean, Legends has offers done with games, by the way. Like, there's Leo's face and like stuff like that. <laughs> oh, nice, really? Okay, all right. Well, uh, kind of you know, it can be also AI generated and, and all of like the different things. Uh, but yeah, definitely memes are uh, something to use. Uh, I used memes uh, recently with Pickle Pete, and uh, it was just it exploded immediately. Not only people from the industry started uh, sending us uh, messages, but also the performance was amazing. So yeah, okay. Then uh, I usually have this discussion on like a monthly basis about like localizing kind of creatives. Oh, yeah, thank you. What are you fucking sharing? You destroying my, destroying my uh, weekend. <laughs> Why is, by the way, still like sharing is so, so low? Uh, because yeah. sharing is, uh, I know. Yeah, I wanted to add my tidbit to the discussion, but it seems like the share software is kind of very, very slow. Sharing is not caring on Riverside. Yeah, oh, I mean, there you go. Oh, I oh yeah, 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 I saw Here this. <laughs> nice. That's perfect. Yeah. So we're using it. Cheers. But the thing is, this is not Leo, right? So it's just like a, the, yeah. the concept. That's the, that's the thing the that Leo from Wish. Re it's Leo from Wish. Recreate the memes. Yeah, recreate the memes. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. So I'd say usually, you know, like how many times I recreated the Drake meme? It's like so many times. Anyway, so so I want to say um, the discussion I usually have uh, around uh, localization, localization of the of the creatives and localization of the game, and soft launch, and where to kind of look into different uh, different countries and localizing for these countries. I mean, usually it can improve the numbers, the localization of I know French, German. Spanish, Italian, or whatever else, uh, like by 10, 20% maybe. I mean, I wouldn't expect more. Uh, I mean, <laughs> as, as we understood from our South Korea visit, it makes a lot of sense in Asia, right? <laughs> no no G Sherlock. Uh, what a revelation. But um, how should you go about like the localizing of your creatives and, and, and game, right? So I would say just look at your 10 top, top 10 countries in terms of revenue. And look at the re resources and money, and then kind of try to add like ten percent uplift on the revenue side, and try to calculate if the costs are uh, try to co calculate the cost versus the potential gain. Because usually localizing game and create well, localizing game is not super cheap, uh, <laughs> but localizing creatives you can do it with AI these days anyway. So let's say you have very strong community in France, and the, your game is text heavy. Well, let's let's say you could add maybe just. 20% uplift to the equation, for example. So uh, maybe they, in that case, it would make uh, make a lot of sense, but I wouldn't put too much effort into localizing the game. If it's like, you know, in general, if the game is, or like UA is not hitting the goals, the localization won't help that much. <laughs> it won't move the needle. Sometimes people are just relying on, um, on like, oh, well, we should localize the game because, you know, that's uh, the expectation. Written in the books. Yeah, no, it's exactly. Like those are like Maybe this. try ads before trying localization. <laughs> yeah, but this like... <laughs> <laughs> you mean ads, uh, ads uh, as uh, rewarded videos and interstitials or uh, ads... Uh, source of ads. revenue. 
So, okay, yeah, so it's a revenue. source of okay. revenue. Okay. By the way, would you, would you say it, it would be preferred, or let's say if you're really, really like a pro and you have very, very high budget to run like custom creatives for each country if they're kind of big enough? So that's the thing. Well, I always uh, wanted to ask this, like if it would be, let's say, French creatives versus US creatives versus Spain ones or whatever. So usually when you have a high budget, then um, you try to put the geos into tiers rather than just uh, geo-specific countries. It's also because uh, France or, or, I don't know, Germany, it's it's way smaller country than the U.S., so the potential reach is, is lower. In that case, even if you use the, the localized creatives, it can work for a long, like short period of time, but then it, it's going to get like more more and more expensive. So you wouldn't anyway like need to kind of... Because the inventory is so small regarding just like the local, whatever French yeah, people yeah, inventory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, some people or some uh, some companies in games do it, but then like the overall budget on the, let's say France is small. But if you put it into like a bigger geo bucket, which is like tier one, and you use English creatives, then obviously like the whole budget for that one campaign with multiple countries can be way bigger than when you just run it in France, for example. Mm. And I ran these A-B tests before. And like, even if, I mean, France is quite specific, but even for Germany, I ran, I, even for France, actually, in, 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 if it matters, like I ran English versus French. Sometimes it doesn't make any, like there's no difference. Mm. So so if I had to ask you a question, if you had a big budget, right? Like a really big budget, bigger than any creative budget you already had, right? Would you localize creatives or would you hire Pedro Pascal? <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, I would, lo- I would localize creatives. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but uh, honestly, if you have bigger budgets and um, like I said, like if the, you don't have the community in, in France, and I mean, like what's the point? I was just like trying to maximize the potential reach and just putting create uh, geos into a tiers makes may, way like way more sense. More sense. Yeah. yeah, way more sense. Because yeah, you can put more budgets and it's like, like we discussed, million times before it's now these days about low amount of campaigns with higher potential reach in the in those campaigns so you can put like a lot of budget on like um uh, i guess the, the those countries and campaigns so yeah i would i wouldn't localize unless it's a pedro pascal versus localization in that case it would be localization <laughs> yeah all right so Let's then get back to the creatives, actually, because there's also like one interesting um, thing that we usually do with the team and like how to write a creative brief because creative brief is super important. So everybody knows like what's going to happen, right? Some people can uh, just have like a written creative brief. Some people are just required to have a storyboard as well, where you just put a lot of different images and kind of like walk through the the creative and how it's it's going to happen but now it's i'm going to give you a crash course on writing a killer creative brief for your your game so first obviously start with a clear and concise project overview this is like uh, the opening cut scene that sets the stage for your creative team then obviously define the target audience who are they what makes them tick uh, this is like choosing the character class in your game Ooh-hoo. Then lay out your objectives. And are you looking to increase installs, boost the engagement, or monetize? All right. So usually I'm, I like to monetize and I'm you kind choose of... Choose your quests. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like to get more ROAS, obviously. It's everybody. But then like, some, some creatives are just meant to increase the overall DAUs, for example. After that, just provide in, insights and, and inspiration. So think of this as a secret level that unlocks creative uh, brilliance. Fire up those external creative tools, which we have uh, right now for our two and a half gamers. Thank you, Senator Tower. And then uh, obviously some internal benchmarks to prepare the numbers and trends. So you can actually see what was working before, what wasn't working before, be, before because it's also uh, important. And uh, bring those insights into the into the bre- um, brainstorming session, and then include any guidelines, specs, requirements, because there are also like for different uh, IPs and then legal lines and all of these like bullshit. It's uh, uh, obviously connected to IP, and like you just include those so everybody knows uh, there are l- rules for your game, 
uh, and then remember that the good creative brief is like a well-crafted tutorial level that guides your team towards a success. So let's uh, let's have an example. So we have a mid-core game, which is about global launch. So the main target audience are males like 35 plus, let's say from Asia. Can you so pick a real use... game? Like... No. Uh, maybe no. yes, maybe no. Okay. Nobody, nobody will ever, ever know that. We want to use these creatives uh, during the global launch and, you know, focusing on effective budget increase rather than just a big, big splash. So it's, we are going to increase the um, the budget slowly. So we have some data from soft launch about the best performing creatives. And, you know, we would like to stay relevant to the gameplay as much as possible. So let's say our main competitors are Survivor.io, Legend of Slime, Top War. Now let's uh, let's brainstorm and come up with like five to six creative concepts. There you go. What, 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 what game are you making if these are all competitors? <laughs> <laughs> Just come on, like, well, thank you. well, it's a hypothetical example. Let's let's say maybe Conquest not. Conquest Star Rail. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. but just like yeah, no, I most most probably no. Just yeah, hope you you get you get the point. Anyway, then uh, then we have um, one final thing, which is uh, which is called best performing UHLs. So there's also like these discussions on LinkedIn, Facebook, or different groups um, saying like, should you be doubling down on your best performing UHL or, or rather than just exploring new channels and diversify? UA diversification, here we are. Uh, so you should focus on the channels where you have the most impact and balance the work behind it, obviously. If you uh, if you have one channel, uh, the bus factor kind of applies here, uh, applies here because if you rely on one channel and the, the channel for some reason gets destroyed by Apple or any other company, this can be very dangerous. So don't listen to like loud CEOs uh, outside of UA uh, that don't have very like experience on the UA, uh, UA field. It can get you in trouble because uh, some people were saying that uh, you should double down on, let's say, Google, which is like 90% of your budget. What happens if Google goes away? Very hypothetical. Could happen because it happened to Facebook before. Now you know where Facebook is. If your 80% of spend goes to Uplavin, it's also very dangerous. So instead, you should kind of like try to have a healthy balance uh, between the UA channels. So let's say UA channel A is 20% 20 of your spend, channel B is 25, C, D, E, just 25, 10, 10, 10, 10%. So you have like 100%, right? It's easy, right? Oh, well, it's, it's not actually easy. Because uh, obviously, especially when like UA channel B is able to scale to hundreds of, of, of thousands and get you amazing growth. But, uh, you know, of course, you should take advantage of that. But think about the future. So this can be very dangerous, right? So you can scale that, but then also have like a backdoor and try to increase the, the other UA channels and, uh, and the budgets all over there. Because your competitor knows this, uh, know this and they're already thinking two steps ahead. And then we have a bonus tip, obviously, but it's like super effective creative research uh, that we discussed with uh, Mr. Jakub over here because he was at the one conference and uh, he, he shared this uh, before. So you should find a very strong... I was strong... waiting where this was put in the whole guide, finally. Yes, <laughs> yes. so you, you, should, uh, you should find a very strong competitor and look into the audience overlap. Put the target on their back and assess all the creatives with the most impressions. Look for the recent winners in the last 30 days and, uh, and evergreen concepts in the last year. So don't try to reinvent the wheel. Just produce like three to five creatives and it could be just like exact copy <laughs> one to one. Like just, yeah, just, just do it and iterate winners from here. Because you know, obviously, you should you should just check our creative trend videos, and because uh, your research is done afterwards, because we already did it for you. But uh, yeah, just don't rain rain when the wheel. If even if you copy one to one, just yeah, fuck it, it's fine. Look at what Kingdom Guard is doing. Like they they copied uh, Rush Royale <laughs> almost one to one, <laughs> and now they're iterating from from there. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's it from my my end. Yeah, sounds can you, great. Can you include a creative brief in, in the show notes, you think, if you anonymize yep. it a bit, just to show what it looks like? Sure. Nice. Yeah, th this was the part I was looking for, like, look at what, 
look at what currently Nexters is doing and copy their fake tower <laughs> game, whatever new trending concept is into your creatives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the thing is, like, even if, if, if you copy Hero Wars, it's not as easy because you need to think about the whole experience with the fake ads. We talked about it a million times before. Yeah, it's so, not that easy. It's not that easy. Faking is hard, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, fake it till make it. Yeah, it doesn't work that, that easy. <laughs> okay, any last thoughts for UA? No, we can uh, we can move to soft launch sonar. Yeah, actually. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Okay. Are you gonna, are you gonna put in the the sound effect? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course, the summary it. sound effect. Mm -hmm. Of course, I, I I put it in the in the last podcast. What are you talking about? Oh, here. Well, I yeah, know yeah, these yeah. people. I know these people. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So this is the third version of Salt One Sonar, where we pick kind of games that I think are important. There's no really some kind of a special order or like special rule. It's just that the game needs to be kind of noteworthy, expected. Like, uh, yeah, I would say pretty big publishers or let's say companies behind them and yeah they should be all in soft launch but this time i guess i think we're kind of seeing some kind of a new trend where soft launches are not happening as soft launches but more like beta releases no 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 wait, 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 wait. you're talking about like supercell that's no, like different. there's like five different games in the sonar running the exact same setup but they're big companies yes yes they're all big go. companies so it means if you're a big company, you don't run soft launches, you've done beta No, tests? no, no. Because if you're a big company, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> because, like, you, you have a lot of money. You can do, obviously, whatever you want. And, like, this is, the like, the most dangerous thing. Because then, like, small companies Having too much think, money, absolutely. 100%. The big, and then, like, you know, like, the small companies look into these, like, strategies. It's like, oh, well, if Supercell is doing it, we can do it as well. It's, uh, don't. Please don't. There's no, only one supercell. You, you don't, yeah, you don't have like. I so can do what so supercell does because only yeah. supercell can do that. Like, anyway, okay. Anyway, uh, starting the sonar with the first game, which is Moco, which we played uh, two podcasts ago, and you can yeah. go directly see it uh, as Matje is, uh, yeah, playing it playing, live uh, on our channel. It's the new action RPG game, uh, beta tested, not soft launch, beta tested. Beta which, tested. Uh, st the beta test started on 25th of October, ended on 7th or 6th, don't remember, of November, and now so pretty much just, just like a survey. I checked it in the Discord, that's it. Uh, we'll see how this one goes. Seems very, very promising. Um, yeah, a lot of people think this is the continuation of Clash Heroes, which they never said anything else about from the announcement, and it was also an action RPG done for the team in China. And this dropped then the Clash Universe IP. So we'll see how this one goes. Looks definitely interesting. And I would say, yeah, I'm kind of very intrigued by the choice of like streamlined Pedo Exile system where there's no character mm -hmm. classes or skill trees or something. It's I just gotta say, Remo, very lazy start to soft launch sonar. We did this like two weeks ago. <laughs> But this very is like literally lazy. one of the biggest soft launches on the market. So what should I say? Which is not even soft launch. Which is yeah, not exactly. Soft yeah. Launch. Uh, definitely we're going to talk about it because it's very interesting so okay move on move on move, move on. on yeah move on okay i don't want to look at my face cookie run uh tower of adventures Ooh. so there's a new game from dev sisters uh which is the company behind cookie run kingdom and it seems it's to be a multiplayer action adventure in the Cookie Run universe. Ooh, G Star now. reveal! Fuck me. Yeah, and there's gonna be G Star reveal. So oh, we need to go there, man. We need to go there. <laughs> exactly. So we're gonna see it next week, uh, G Star, and uh, yeah, it seems. Well, this, this week is, uh... because this is gonna be live on Monday. Yeah. Okay, so you're pretty much listening to it. We are probably somewhere on our endless way to South Korea. Yes. Um, and the game, as I said, like follows now, like now IP of Cookie Run, which mm -hmm. is the uh, famous RPG that has, I think, like 50-50 gender split or something Ooh, like that. Last that's time interesting. Why we haven't it. talked about it yeah. yet? We never talk about it. Like we sometimes, mm -hmm. I think I talk we about. But yeah, this game is like amazing. Even the, like the main one makes like I don't know, like fifty million a month or something. Like Ooh, giant, you, giant, you. a giant Asian game. I think you uh, need to talk about this, Remo. On yeah, we some sometimes we will. I guess when when this releases, we can do like a full full rundown of all the Cookie Run stuff. That would yeah. Be good. Okay. 
Yeah, so this this thing, as I said, is going to be shown G Star. There's even G-Star. really like nine nice we can, pl- web we can page play. For you. We can play. Where, where there's like ten dollar daily prizes if you register, you are able to win. Like, uh, who cares about ten dollars? Uh, I'm just saying, like, how they're running their test, man. <laughs> so anyway, okay. uh, yeah. So here's the schedule. Oh, yeah. We can probably <laughs> try to catch it on Friday. We'll see. Influence yeah, okay. showdown or whatever. Yeah, so this it's gonna is gonna be millions of people. Jeez. Okay. No, it's not gonna help. Half the game's cost the size. We'll see. Anyway, mm, yeah, so that well, was that, that was okay. Kukiran Tower of Adventures, which will be revealed uh, properly on G Star next week. This week, then we have Elder it's Scrolls TV. Castles from what? Bethesda. No. Yes. Oh my God! Is this Hustle Castle? No. This is not Hustle Castle. Well, for Fallout Shelter. Yes, because Fallout well, Hustle Castle is Fallout Shelter, basically. No. Okay. Hustle Castle is a lot of innovation on top of Fallout okay. Shelter. Okay. Uh, this seems, again, to be some kind of more innovative because there's this kind of reigns mechanic, if you know the game Reigns, which is the game I... that looks like Tinder, where you have just cards and you swipe to left to right. Where there's the... How See, do you know? The... How do I know what? Tinder. <laughs> He? Even I know salty dog. Like not Q5s. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, uh, so there seems to be some kind of rain rain mixed in into it, which is the like story plotline twist, like you know, your decisions have uh, some kind of impact or whatever. Uh, there's this kind of a big play on the usual kind of dynasty, having children, building the kingdom, blah 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 blah. Yes. Uh, there's the usual kind of a end colony view, or how should I say it? Like you seeing the castle like yeah, like your end colony and you're building the rooms for them. I didn't find that this is literally like a 40 minute playthrough video and I didn't find any combat in it. So I don't know if I missed it or they hadn't really re- revealed it or what. Like, but this is so- fully soft launch now. So fully soft launch, okay. Yeah, this is not beta like the other ones. This is soft launch, but yeah, I don't know what, if I did miss them or like, there's no combat in it because I don't know. Like, it's just do, like, do we need to have a combat in in this game? Mm, Hustle Castle has combat if you are referring yeah. to Hustle Castle. Fallout Shelter okay. has some kind of a let's say. Passive combat, you, you, you like send the yeah, the guys there and they fight in the wilderness, they return or whatever. They need to have stats. So this seems kind of just much more simulation in this and kind of much more calming. I don't know. Yeah, but but boring, it's interesting. You mean? Calming, calming, yeah, calming. boring. <laughs> That's what you say. Uh, because there was already like Elder Scrolls Blades, which I think is still sitting somewhere in some Bethesda portfolio account, which was that Skyrim with 12 hour chests that people literally, you know, go crazy about. Didn't do anything. So, yeah, let's see how this one fares because it's, uh, I would say, a little bit of like the non combat innovation towards, towards Fallout Shelter or like Hustle Castle. Let's see. But yeah. I guess the rain's influence seems to be more into it. Like the one where you can affect the story. It's kind of more like, I think, roguelite a little bit. Don't know. Let's see like how this one goes. But seems like, yeah, the usual standard seems, seems AAA, com- AAA company having a mobile game. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. And I saw that free button right now. It could have been an ad <laughs> placement. It's just like, <laughs> pretty good feelings already. Ugh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that was Elder Scrolls Castles continuing forward. Eve Galaxy Conquest. And guess what? The Are you only of... doing hardcore games today? No, I'm not going to. Mm. Don't worry. There will be better games. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, guess the genre of this game. Hardcore. Mate. Um. Let's see. Oh, that's that's fucking forex. <laughs> exactly. oh, Jesus Christ! Yeah, it's a forex game. Uh, this was soft launch actually second of November, if I got it right. From as soon as you have that map in there. Yeah, yeah. Map yeah. Even moving it's troops. It's yeah, space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's true. Uh, but it's forex actually space. My it's God. actually perfect for like e fantasy. Like this is literally how Eve is played. You know, like long distances ships kind of conquering stuff in space and so on. like it could f- like feel pretty natural but the question is that like is this for eve people or like forex people exactly. because sci-fi like you know say goodbye to your cpi but this on the other <laughs> would be just yeah the highest cpi award uh <laughs> of the year. Yeah, of the year. yeah but on the other hand like eve people they're like super core like even playing eve and like, getting into eve like you're, you're super super core like why would you 
play a mobile game if you like that. Cool. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. like, I, I don't know. Oh. Well, if they, they already had like some PC. some VR VR games of, with Eve IP before and like stuff like that. Like just to I just increase the awareness for the for the Eve brand because Eve is still going strong. I mean the MMORPG. It's super strong. The C now he's yawning. I know. <laughs> uh so yeah seems kind of a little bit of mismatch for the audience from my taste but yeah let's see how this one fares because again very very known ip but i guess not that known on mobile let's see okay this one's very interesting yes. and i'm really looking forward to it of course you are so this is your game one punch man world is a new open world uh, action RPG that will be a completely cross-platform game, so something similar to like Genshin or Honkai Star Rail. Uh, it's currently in pre-registration. Uh, there's not uh, like yet release set in stone. I think I saw the like the giant uh, booth at Gamescon of this, mm. and probably we'll see something more of it at G Star. Let's see. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, for those who don't know, One Punch Man is like one of the most popular animes last years. It's literally an anime about the guy that uh, wins every fight with single punch. And it's like, yeah, amazing concept. Uh, and uh, the thing is that as I was looking through some of the things here, by the way, they have amazing website, uh, amazing pre-registration campaign already. It seems, uh, yeah. Amazing. Uh, it seems there's already like past 1 million pre registrations in Ooh, this kind of nice. A... These milestones, I like these milestones. See? That's clever. Like, That's these pretty guys, clever. These guys are very, very kind of high production value. As I said, the IP is very, very known. This is on, like, this is done by Perfect World and Crunchyroll. Perfect World, like, one of the biggest Chinese developers of MMORPGs. Yeah. So, yeah. Crunchyroll is who I know the game. Crunchyroll the... is like the anime streaming company. Okay. So they probably, I don't know who owns the rights for One Punch Man, but okay. like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So the interesting part, like this was, this was really nice. There's already, there was a beta test and there's going to be a second beta test. You can oh, register for that. Nobody knows when, but it seems like there's completely story mode gameplay. It completely follows the anime part, which like genius, genius move because it's like so satisfying with this anime. Where literally like, for instance, this sequence when Saitama gets like ambushed by random underworld guys from whatever some kind of something and he finally gets his kind of let's say thrill experience or fighting an opponent that's like pretty pretty let's say on the same level like somewhere here the whatever the king it just notice how the combat is kind of pretty pretty much fleshed out it's, it's not a usual hack and slash it seems there's some kind of a like anime sequences we've into it, quick time events. Uh, it's not like the usual action RPG. So, mm. yeah, it's going to be very interesting because think about it, that it's going to be in open world plus on, yeah. on well, top how, of how it. How the fuck you can play this on mobile? It's like, how can you play Hong Kong Star on the mobile? Like, this is well, the I new... don't. That's, that's I don't either. Play. So, yeah. This is, this is, <laughs> man, this is the new generation of mobile games, which are yeah. not mobile. This is completely cross-platform. Yeah, yeah, okay. They are announcing it's for PC, Android, iOS, all of it. So yeah. this seems that this could be like, I would put it like Genshin-like games, which means yeah, okay. that there's the same amount of resources poured into it. Yeah, so, so I wanted to say like it's more coming from the east yeah, yeah, rather than the west. Of course, because they have the manpower. Yeah. yeah. I, I just can't imagine how much manpower was like slotted into yeah. this. Yeah, the, the best part would be about this sequence that like finally when he kind of gets to defeat this guy, of course, with one punch. Uh, yeah, it seems that it was all in his dreams and he wakes up because, uh, yeah, there's, of course, nobody strong enough to face him in the, in the real world. So, yeah, like, okay. uh, I'm really looking forward to this game. Like, I just, like, can, there will be one more game on the Sonar that's kind of trying to do the same thing here. Mm. But, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very, very excited, like, how this will fare regarding the whole Genshin, Hong Kong style, and, like, pretty much this whole, like, giant cross cross-platform open world RPG market, which is getting very, very, very packed up mm. recently. See, this is this is the part. Yeah, man, that's such that's cheap true. writing. It was <laughs> all so, a dream. Yeah, yeah, it's so, so good. Okay, let's continue. Uh, EA Sports FC. Ooh. So, it's a game soft launch September 28th, uh, which is uh, like the term based take on football, uh, sitting currently on EA's account. Uh, remember, there's no FIFA brand anymore. 
which was no FIFA, uh, it's because their CEO be managed FIFA. to ruin it. <laughs> yeah, so they already sold their new kind of known FIFA EA uh, pretty well. So I guess because everybody won't see FIFA anymore in video game brands, or at everybody least not that, not that Every, expensive. Everybody's uh, gonna call it FIFA anyway. Yeah, uh, the yeah. gameplay itself seems kind of interesting, where you see just this kind of a overview top of the players, and then suddenly when they kind of get into some interaction, there's like a skill check or whatever, like critical intercept, whatever as you see, and then it plays animations. So it's not your usual kind of a FIFA game where you like control the thing; it kind of auto plays itself. So yeah, suits kind of pretty well suited on mobile. I think I saw like a few other games doing this kind of turn-based football before, so this is a kind of high production take on that. So there were definitely like similar games on the market like that before. Let's see. Continuing further, AEV rise to the top from Eastside Games, which is what? another one of their spin on their usual idol genre game mm. with the uh, WrestleMania. Oh, is it uh, IP? If I understand correctly. Um, don't um, yeah, don't quote me on this. I'm not really well versed in this. Hey, we, I, I, we is the competitor to WWE. Yeah, okay. So the other wrestling association in America, if I get it right. Okay. But yeah, the other wrestling. <laughs> so uh, it seems that the usual thing, like just from this image here, you can see like the scaling of the idle journey uh, that they have there. Uh, seems very very similar to like trailer power boys or something like that. From they this, like, basically have built this with idle kit, which is their like kit that they build I, I games games kit. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 okay because they're, they're kind of good in like putting ips into that kit i guess like there's uh, what like uh, trail park boys is an ip as a story series. driven ip games yeah story, story sunny, driven idol ip games yeah always sunny in philadelphia i think is the second one ip and then mm. this is again an ip like all those are ip so let's see um yeah as i was looking it's like it's a typical like character progression loot boxes like the usual take which is kind of very heavy ip so let's see how this goes but yeah nice to see like if this formula is still working okay continuing further guess which this game is Ooh. so fashion verse fashion your way uh which is uh published by tilting point Ooh. and and this okay. is actually uh, a little bit of iteration from our usual suspects, which is Design Home and Redecor, where you have something between an app and a game, yeah. wh where, of course, there's like gamified experience or redecorating something. So as I'm looking at it, it seems that you can not only kind of select just the clothes, but also some kind of a furniture on top. If I see the... Yeah. See, so you can even put stuff there. So it's both clothes yeah. and furniture. So I guess it's kind of iteration on the usual formula that we see on the market. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just like so the it's, question this is, is soft it, launch. Yeah, this is soft launch. But the thing is that this is soft launch for June twentieth, twenty twenty two. The fuck did you find this game? You can pre-register for it now. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, but how did you find it? Yeah. I'm just, you know, scanning around like everything I can, like all the, you know, soft launch games, accounts of companies, whatever, everywhere. You started being lazy with like MoCo and now you're proving your worth. Oh, I never <laughs> doubted you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, by the way, that's the best way like to find soft launch games. Just go top, top 100 grossing and check the companies by their game portfolios by release date ordered and pick the last ones. But that's usually the soft launch games. Uh, this looks quite interesting though i gotta say yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um again my question is if there's enough space on the market for like another game because i think kind of really core went into kind of big decline after platica's acquisition as they well, kind of there is always space but not probably the same amount of revenues that they had yeah they had yeah. and have now so yeah you so can earn see. money now on this type of game but it seems kind of interesting again. Like I think that market is kind of underserved a little bit still, where there's yeah. not enough of these like games like apps. But yeah, let's see. It looks very promising to be honest, just just from the gameplay. Okay, this one is very special. Dark and darker. Oy, 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 oy. Yeah, Mob, dark and dark mobile. Okay. So this was already covered uh, in uh, Matthias' newsletter mm -hmm. by our friend Doctor Doom. <laughs> which means uh, that this game is still in lawsuit because the short history of it is that Dark and Darker was very popular on Steam, literally reached like 
60k CCU and then got cease and desist a letter from Nexon because they alleged that it's a part of their kind of old project that the team that left Nexon to quit them or some kind of shenanigans. Oh, I yeah. don't know. So they had to be taken down from Steam. Then they put the game on torrents to give it to players for beta testing. Now now Love you can it. buy now you can, yeah because like you know Iron Mace Iron Mace is the developer. And then uh they are you can you can directly go and buy the game on their website like right now. I mean the PC version. Mm. And in the meantime Crafton acquired exclusive rights for a mobile port of the game. Oy, oy, oy. Scrafton being the studio behind Blue Hole, behind the studio behind PUBG. So, yeah. Yeah, again, yeah, yeah, okay. why this is a pretty good match? Because this game is an iteration on PUBG, because it's a Battle Royale game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let, let's check the PC version a little bit here. So, it's pretty much a, like a you could you could think like looks like Skyrim or something, but it's like a b- little bit of dungeoneering experience when you go there. Mm. And there's some kind of labyrinth that you see on the bottom, but you already see the like the red circle around oh, on yeah, the map, yeah. which is the blue zone, the usual one that's gonna get smaller and smaller. And uh, yeah, you go in it and you kill people and you take their stuff. Where have you seen this formula oh. before? Yeah. So PUBG. <laughs> exactly the. Other iteration that is not only Dungeon Fighter and a Battle Royale is the extraction mechanic. And this could be the topic of next year within these kind of Battle Royale iteration. Extraction means that you take the stuff. That's why there was like so much treasure in the like opening trailer. You take the stuff when you win the level and you bring it to your kind of base. And then you can decide if you want to bring it to with you to next level, giving you basically an advantage. Because... It, in PUBG games, or let's say Battle Royale games, you always start with nothing. Here, mm-hmm. they kind of increase the thrill, or let's say the stakes, by you having stuff that you can lose, which you have like you know worked for in previous games, so on and so forth. So, it seems it's a proven uh, mechanic because of their like amazing CCU on Steam that they reached. I don't think so. They're going to be returning to Steam any, <laughs> any soon, soon. <laughs> until that lawsuit gets kind of resolved. But I think they it was returned back to Korea or something. I like so Diablo was... too so much. <laughs> Which this one? Yeah, the environment's like very yeah. dark and green. And also but... the inventory. Yeah. inventory. See, that, that, that was the zone, zone coming at the person and like already eating to his health. Yeah, so... Yeah, I'm really looking forward to what you'll see at G Star because there's going to be yes. more reveal there for the mobile one. The one that oh you're seeing God. here is the. It's going to be quite packed. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so, forward. yeah, yeah. Going to be very, very interesting. And I've saved the best for the last. Oy, oy, oy. So tell us more. And of oh, course. Yeah, fuck me. Just, yeah, thank you very much for listening. Uh, let's uh, just <laughs> fucking end here. So there's the Zenless Zone Zero, which is the yeah. long awaited third open world RPG from MiHoYo, or let's say HoYoVerse, uh, the guys behind Genshin and Hawkeye Star Rail. Uh, this was already heavily showcased on Gamescom. They literally have like half of one hole, just like for them. Um, it seems that they're continuing with their like, we're throwing as much throwing as much manpower as we can on our projects and even more than the previous one. Because you see what I see, so, Mache? This, this Boobs. is amazing. Yes, of course. I mean, of course. Yeah. No, it's like it's an anime. What are you, what are you talking about? Yeah. Oops. <laughs> exactly. No, but this looks amazing. Yeah, it's this like literally looks like watching an anime. Like uh, it looks yeah. better actually. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a very interesting thing here. Is that this like I would thought that what they did is like you know they're keeping the meta progression and they would keep like Genshin is an open world RPG. Uh, Honkai Star is a turn-based RPG, completely different combat system, but the same progression. So I thought like, okay, they, they do another kind of different core gameplay mm. and stick with the same progression. No. It seems this is kind of very close to Genshin and it's a hack and slash combat with real time. Uh, yeah, instead of watching a cinematic, we can actually watch the real gameplay. Yes, please. Yeah. So there's some boss fight here. Cool. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks and, amazing. Yeah, and it's pretty much for me, it looks like much better Genshin. Because keep in mind that Genshin is pretty old now, in a way, like mm. by mobile standards, I would say. Yeah, okay, sure. Mm. But this looks amazing. I was checking just like latest Genshin gameplay compared to this, and this is just like the whole kind of camera movement. A different, a different level. 
Yeah, yeah, different level, like just Genshin times three kind of oh, level. I'm getting the same feeling like when I saw Final Fantasy for the first time. This is great. Yeah, looks. Well, yeah, looks, it's so great you will never play. <laughs> yeah, of course not. It's not. Yeah, of course. I got shit to do. <laughs> That's so, amazing. yeah, looks looks literally amazing. Even though, again, I, I don't know what's the plan regarding the cannibalization strategy of their own portfolio, because I think this is the biggest problem of it all. Like, don't get me wrong, this game will be super successful. The question is what will be the impact on their own portfolio, because they are literally competing against themselves again. Uh, the other interesting thing is that now that we have other competitors in the field, like the One Punch Man game I showed. It's exactly like the One Punch game. Fact, yeah. like, I was like, well, like, like what is like, like, what game? Platform, like, this is the one? Open yeah. world RPG is the next big thing. So, uh this seems everybody's going after so yeah everybody I think... from asia yeah be everybody careful from asia. be careful <laughs> because nobody in the west have the resources to put that's it true yeah that, that's that's the main reason yeah you would need to like employ like half of slovakia to make this game <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the second half in the finish <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, uh looks amazing. It seems like the combat fluidity and like the overall feeling of it, like yeah, it's it's literally just like very, very nice to watch. Even um they you can register on the second beta test already. Uh they haven't uh announced anything yet, uh like when it's gonna happen. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I think they opened the test like now in November 20. So, registration. how many games did you review now? Just now? Like 10? Ten? 10. And nine of them are from the East, right? No. No. Eight? No. No. Mm. How many? So, if one, two, two. three, four. Wow. What's your oh, bias, man? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I thought it was a bit more than uh, usual. No, 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 no. Ah, this is just no, for no. just to, uh, just like always more ex- games, excited, man. more excited with like yeah. from that coming from Asia. Like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It really is. Of course, it is. All right. Yeah. So that was it. Of Sona version three. Another ten games. We'll see what happens. Keep them on our Sona. Of course. Amazing. Thank you very much. I think that's it, right? Uh, that's it. Should, uh, yeah. yeah, see you at G Star with all these see reveals. You. Yeah, see you at G Star. Uh, ping us on on Slack. Join well first. Join the Slack, then ping us on our Slack, and then uh, we can definitely meet. It's actually the agenda is starting to fill up quite uh, uh, well nicely. I would say. Yeah, no, no, it's well finally. So uh, in that case, enjoy the weekend. Oh well, we will enjoy the weekend because we're recording Friday. You enjoy the week <laughs> ahead, and then uh, see you next time. Thank you very much. Cheers. Ciao. Bye-bye.